We will go into the physics engines that run games and compare games that use different or similar physics engines to show the differences and similarities. We will also talk about the different types of methods and physics engines used to simulate details. There are two types of physics engines available. High precision physics engines take into account every aspect of physics to produce the maximum amount of reality. However, it takes much longer to render scenes with these engines, so it is not ideal for a game. Real-time physics engines are engines that don't include the small, unnoticeable physics. While still having everything to create a realistic environment, this allows it to render faster and is therefore ideal for game engines to use. If collision detection did not exist, players would be able to walk through walls and bullets would pass right through you. Game engines use something called bounding boxes which help reduce the amount of physics calculations required in-game rendering. Suppose you have a detailed model of a player in-game. An example of a bounding box would be a low detailed version of the player around the player but invisible. Now, when it collides with something, there is a more simple version to deal with. Some games use ragdoll physics combined with a collision detection, which creates a more realistic environment. Ragdoll physics allows a player or object to become completely limp and simulate actual physics in real time. Before that, there were only preset animations for collisions. Here's an example of collision detection that uses both animation and ragdoll physics. There are several different ways that physics engines simulate dynamics. The first is called the penalty method, in which the interactions or collisions are treated as springs. Constraint-based methods estimate physics using constraint equations. Impulse-based methods attach impulses to all objects and measure them when they interact. Then there are hybrids which incorporates some of all of the above. Particle systems can simulate an event that would otherwise require many different objects to be moving in different directions very fast. Particle systems in games are usually two-dimensional, but are always rotated in real time to wherever the player is to make it look 3D. Here's an example of how objects would work if no physics or only partial physics existed. Here we will show you how to figure out the velocity and acceleration of a falling object in Gary's Mod. When the object starts falling, it will accelerate at the rate of the change in velocity divided by the change in time. At a certain point, the object will reach its maximum acceleration 9 meters per second every second. The velocity can be found by dividing the change in rate by the change in time. We will now compare different games that have the same physics engines. We will start with comparing death physics between Unreal Tournament 3 and Fallout 3, both of which use the NVIDIA PhysX physics engine. Now we will compare rocket physics between the same games, again using NVIDIA PhysX. We are now switching physics engines to Havoc, which is currently one of the most popular physics engines. We will compare melee physics between Half-Life 2, Bioshock, and Assassin's Creed. And now, with the same games, shotguns. There's another one! We now we will switch to comparing games that use different physics engines. 
We will compare Crisis, which uses CryEngine, Fallout 3, which uses NVIDIA Physics, and Gary's Mod, which uses Havoc. We will shoot random crap with an assault rifle in each video. Got something to sell? Understood. Cycle will provide support. The history of physics in games is simple. It keeps getting better. With larger processors we keep getting, physics engines are able to render more accurate and more detailed scenes. The Half-Life game series is a good way to show you the progress in physics. There are four games in this series, the earliest one being released in 1998. Each continuation has kept the same game engine and the same physics engine. Except with almost each new game, both the physics engine and the game engine have gotten significant upgrades. We will compare the differences between the different games. We can start with comparing the AI of talking characters. You can call it the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator if you really want to. It's designed for handling hazardous materials, but we mainly use it for heavy lifting. Give it a try. I feel compelled to thank you personally for saving my rocket. So, um, I've got a rocket to launch. Also by comparing destructible scenery. Now comparing particles. And how about soda machines? Apart from the obvious graphical differences, Half-Life 2 allows you to take the soda from the machine after it is dispensed. And lastly, health dispensers. Here is a list of some popular games and the game engines they use, along with their physics engines. The End